Welcome to the 2024 Austrian Grand Prix predictions reaction. I'm Sagan, and I'm joined in once again, <laughs> thank God, by you, the Apple AGX. I'm, I'm back. I am back from my break to TwitchCon. Uh, yes, I'm back and ready to talk about what was the most exciting Grand Prix of the year, perhaps, uh, that I missed, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> And it's always the one that you're not expecting to be insane. I just miss him. And unfortunately, but at least you have fun uh, on TwitchCon. Yes, yeah, it was amazing. So, uh, yes. Okay. Gladly, um, I'll, 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 take the, I'll take the singular miss for uh, such a epic weekend of gaming. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. You had fun. I'm... I'm, I'm be sure a lot of others have fun. I think you've met some some other creators as well, so that's uh, always great. Unfortunately, I couldn't go, and I I don't think I, I'll ever go because I'm just not really into traveling too much. And mm. yeah, and I wouldn't really want to reveal myself in real life as well. So yeah, it's just that's just me. But hey, look, I managed to not do it. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, it just it just had glasses on and kind of a mask suit. So. So, I did, I did. Yeah. Yes. All right. All right. Um, we can go for uh, for the predictions reaction or the well general Austrian Grand Prix reaction uh, transition. We're in the spreadsheet. Our predictions look interesting, <laughs> to say the least. And uh, the Grand Prix. Well, um, it was a sprint weekend. That's uh, that's important to mention. And it was a pretty interesting weekend. Uh, we started with just one practice session, which. Uh, it looked like it would be extremely close. It turned out to be well, um, fairly close. Uh, not that quite close for Austrian Grand Prix standards because it's a one minute lap. We expected it to be well, closer than it was. But, yep. Um, sprint qualifying ended up with Max up in pole position. <laughs> yeah, he was, uh, he was quick this weekend. A lot quicker than I thought he was going to be. I thought the McLaren uh, maybe doesn't suit Austria, but I remember they got just exponentially quicker there last season, um, randomly. Uh, and that was their sort of start from the, from the back to becoming the second quickest car uh, for the majority of that season. Um, so I was expecting something similar here, where they would just suddenly boosted themselves. Didn't happen, but... Uh, Still, uh, Max was just phenomenal in terms of his speed around that track uh, for the qualifying sessions. Yep, yep, definitely, definitely right. Um, spring qualifying, was there anything specific to mention? I don't clearly remember that session. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you didn't watch it, at least uh, not fully. You watched like highlights, no, I was right? On a boat. <laughs> so yeah, you watched only the highlights. So I should be the <laughs> the main commentator. Yeah. But I, I I'm not really sure what I remember from that sprint qualifying, other than Max getting pole by one half of a second ahead of Lando. Oscar was P3, so yeah, Max started showed pace, and that was pretty much it. Uh, oh yeah, one one thing that it's important to mention from the session: Logan Sargent outqualified Alex Albon, like fair and square. Yep, it was the first time it was actually like on pace outqualified Alex in a session. He, in a Miami, session. he did in Miami. He, he did, but that was because Alex had a lap time deleted. But this this time it was pure pace, oh, and Logan okay, Sargent okay. finally outqualified. I feel like. 40 qualifying sessions, finally I qualified Alex Alman. Unfortunately, it was only a spring qualifying, so it still doesn't really count, but, well, good job from, from Logan. Definitely uh, improvement over <laughs> the past 40 races or so. <laughs> okay, um, moving on to the spring race uh, that you watched from highlights as well, I, I assume. Yes. So, yes. Well, uh, we started, uh, started with... Uh, Pretty interesting start. I, mean, I certainly didn't expect uh, it to stay that close since the RS is open after lap one. The McLarens could keep up with Max uh, in that the yeah. RS range, and yeah, it, it was a it was a pretty nice battle for for like the first five laps. Then um, Lando actually overtook Max, but um, 
underestimated Max or Stappen in the fight for a win mode. <laughs> Max just sending down inside, Lando lost the position to Piastri, Piastri couldn't keep up with Max and the McLarens and that ended up in 2-3, so Max win the sprint, wins the sprint race. Um, it was actually like a lot of fun at the beginning, but as the sprint went on, it was a, kind of boring. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's very DRX heavy with the dirty air, of course. It, cars can't stay behind for that long, and it just meant that yeah. eventually people had to gap themselves. But it was exciting at the start, at the very least. Yep. Um, and, and sort of gave us a preview of what was the, going to be the race. Yep. Yep, true that. Um, we, obviously, um, after the sprint race, um, I think a lot of people were expecting Max to be more dominant, especially after qualifying itself. We'll talk about it later. Yeah, the, the Grand Prix itself. <laughs> it? we'll, we'll talk about it, also, obviously. Um, yeah. Other than that, notable things from the sprint race, obviously, um, we had the, the podium that we mentioned already. Um, nothing interesting back there, other than like Magnuson and Stroll randomly in the top 10. Like, if it was like any other race, if it was a sprint race, so, uh, only the top 8 get points, but if, if it was yeah. any other race, it was so random Magnuson and Stroll points. <laughs> Yeah, two of the drivers we don't think are doing great this season, suddenly just getting points, so... Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> Well, um, you had a little Magnus at your least person driver, I see now. <laughs> yeah, like one of his best weekends in in a while. <laughs> so, uh... Sadly for me, given yeah. my, uh, strange prediction. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. All right, um, moving on to the our session in, on Saturday, which was the qualifying session for the Sunday's Grand Prix. We had, well, very, very, very close Q1. Uh, we had, like, Ferrari winning, actually, Q1. But as Q2 arrived, Max just, well, um, Max did those Max or Stephen things and ended up half a second ahead of everyone. Yeah, yeah think, which is mental, mental mistrack to do. Um, it's very much just, yeah, he, he just seems to be able to turn it up a different level, doesn't he? Um, and that was the case this weekend, where he just rose, rose it up uh, for qualifying and uh, blitzed everyone away. It's certainly what I wasn't expecting, um, given Red Bull recently, and even Max's form recently. That was a very dominant Q2, as we moved to the Q3 itself. It was pretty much the same story. Uh, McLaren's caught up a little bit uh, with Lando there, but still uh, a huge cap for, for the shortest track on the calendar in terms of lap time. Obviously, Monaco is shorter, but uh, it's all slow corners, so it's, uh, it's a yeah. bit of a longer lap time. Um, yeah, Max, absolutely dominant, absolutely faultless in that qualifying session, match to well destroy everyone including this team including his teammate which uh, i'm pretty sure it was a he was unqualified by like a second <laughs> so yeah not the greatest look for Perez on the on the shortest track on the calendar um, yeah it's a, it's another one again where I, and we don't really have a full understanding of where red bull are obviously they were the quickest car last year and going into this year at the very start they were by far the quickest uh so far, they don't look that much quicker. But you still think that a, a top team, Paris should be, you know, be there for the ten, to at least fight for the podium uh, at the end of the race once his teammate and the other big competitors crashed out, at least for the podium at the very least. But <laughs> it's just not there at all. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely right. Um... Yeah, um, it's it, it's Perez. It's we kind of <laughs> we use this I, phrase yeah. a lot, but yeah, um, he's starting to get. Believe he drive. <laughs> he's starting to get really critical. I I think even if he got his extension, I think still like this is this is not a safe space for Perez to be in. I feel like he really needs to get some podiums in, or he might really end up without a seat next year. Um, I 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure Red Bull still can fire their drivers, even though if they're on contract, because we saw yeah. them swap drivers during mid-season, so I'm pretty sure they have some some clause in the Perez's contract and they can get rid of him, potentially. And yeah, yeah Perez is definitely not showing enough, well, enough anything uh, to warrant that seat at Red Bull for the next two years, not let alone this year. Um, so yeah, um, okay, uh, back to qualifying, obviously max pole position, so uh, neither of us get points. <laughs> we both expected Lando to be there. Uh, to be fair, mm-hmm. yeah, in spring qualifying was close, so could be, but yeah, max just on some different level here. Uh, did you want to say anything? Oh, no, no, I was just uh, yeah, I was uh, saying, yeah, I, I was... I was very much like, this is McLaren's weekend, uh, and it didn't end up being. Uh, so, uh, we were a bit screwed on points, but uh, it was a, I mean, the race. That's, oh, I'm very excited to talk about the race. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Um, P2 in real life, Lana Norris, no points. P3 was, well, uh, was supposed to be Oscar Piastri. But. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't we go off the. Yeah, it, we obviously got go by the official, but without without the penalties. But this wasn't a penalty. This was a track limits violation. Yeah, so yeah, it doesn't true, count. I'm sorry. I would, I would I I literally like. I was so pissed no, no, that no, it's, it's fair, it's those fair. those track limits were such a joke. Like they they literally put gravel everywhere just for the track limits to occur in the. The turn it was not supposed to like the, the how was the car in, like how did the car even was able to get into that turn do a track limits and still set a quick lap time like Piastri was supposed to be P three I I don't get it like he literally went up the gravel lost time and still got his lap time blue like you put all this effort to make the track more like more tight with the, the, the curves reduce all the gravel addition. Uh, out of there, obviously. Turn 9 and turn 10 had no track limits, I think, uh, for the entire weekend. Um, in terms of the gravel being there, that was a good one, but turn 6, I think, was it, that Piastri got his life in the lid? That was such a such a stupid... What, how, how, do you, how are you able to change the entire track but forget one turn, have enough space there for a car, and still... It, it goes to the gravel, gravel loses time, and still gets lap and lap and lead time. I was so pissed during that qualifying, like, I, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. It was it was, it was this race. Um, Piastri should have won this race if it wasn't for the stupid track limit. And yeah. I'm, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a bit of a bit of a bent, but yeah, I, I had to. Uh, P3 in real life, obviously, inherited uh, P3 was, I think, uh, Lewis Hamilton or George Russell. Uh, one of those two, actually. can't remember. Um... I think it was it was Lewis, right? I'm looking it up uh, right now. <laughs> Maybe it was George. It was one of those Mercedes uh, drivers, definitely. Uh, I kind of check because I'm on the spreadsheet. So I'm relying on you right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, God. <laughs> uh, it was George in third. Okay, okay. Anyways, we go and get points. I have a good job from, from Russell there. P4 was uh, Carlos, right? Or was it? Yes. Oh, yes. Carlos. Oh, you get a point for qualifying. Good job. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> and P5 it's was... It's about to be two points. P5 was Lewis now, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great job. That's... Uh... Very lucky. Very, very lucky. Very lucky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely uh, pretty... Really lucky points, but still, you guessed it right. Uh, the, the, it was just George and uh, the top two swapped. It's it's a pretty yeah, good prediction, yeah. to be fair. So, yeah, yeah, yeah it's good. a fairly, fairly decent, obviously. But obviously, if Piastri's time would stand stood, then I'd be, uh, I'd be wrong. So, uh, it's, it's one of those, um, one of those where a bit of luck was sprinkled in. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah right. Um, in terms of points, I think I only get one po- single point uh, in the remaining category, so not the oh, greatest gosh. weekend for me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I'm 
not sure how many how many did I we'll, we'll, we'll figure out by the end of this. Let's <laughs> <Shall we laughs> head off to the race. Um yeah but uh, talking about qualifying, uh, I think oh, we yeah. have to mention uh, some well uh obviously Hulkenberg and Ockham getting into key three. Um well uh, good job from them I guess. Uh Leclerc bottling his uh, final run going to the gravel um and well um qualifying only in P7 or P8. Actually, maybe he didn't have any time. It, it was the spring pool thing that they, like, half a grid actually went up late and Leclerc couldn't get the lap time in. But in actual qualifying, Leclerc bottled it in this final run and ended up in, like, P8 or P7. Uh, well, the Perez territory, which is not the greatest territory to be in. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, um, other than that, from qualifying, I don't think there's anything else to mention. Well, Aston being trash, we're kind of used to it, so nothing really to say there. Okay, um, let's get to the race. Uh, <laughs> one, that, one thing that we want, really wanted to talk about. Um, let's start with the, with the start of the race, obviously. Um, yes. We have the, I think we have Russell overtaking the McLarens. Right. Yeah, George had to... I think George... Uh, you, you're better at this than me. I didn't want to do <laughs> No, yeah. Um, um, I think that was... Uh, actually, One thing I can remember from the start is uh, Hamilton's audacious overtake on sites. That's, that's yeah, the, the thing I remember. There's so many things that happened at the start. I can literally remember one like, thing clear. I think it was like Piastri uh, with Perez causing uh, damage to Leclerc, obviously. Lewis going off track, causing damage to his car on his own. Um, we had, like, Russell getting into, like, P2 or P3 at the start. Obviously, Lando then overtook him, but couldn't catch up with Max. Uh, Max created, a, like, a five or six second lead. And uh, it was pretty much the first half of the race. There wasn't much going on, or then the midfield fighting, obviously, with a lot of pit stops, I think, Every single team were at least uh, on a two stop, two stop strategy with uh, <laughs> Ferrari going in a four stop because it's Ferrari, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, it was an interesting strategy, strategic battle, obviously, uh, with the Hasses up front. Uh, I think they had a very good strategy, uh, ended up where they did. Um, we'll talk about it with the results. Um, but then we got to the with the, uh, the second bunch of pit stops uh the second uh, or the final third of the race red bull which we expect red bull to normally be like faultless in pit stops right yeah yeah they're so so good they just bottle a pit stop which is so unusual from red bull send out max max locks up lano is suddenly in his drs range and the fun begins we at least i expected lano to drop off like he did in the sprint race. Um, yeah. And it he didn't. He actually was on a fresh set of tires than, uh, than Max and could could well, uh, keep up with him. And not only keep up with him, he was actually trying to overtake him for a good yes. bunch of laps. And it was it was great to see. It was very exciting. Um, <laughs> sure, it was a lot of it in the highlights. And it was, it was going on for uh, quite a few laps. Very exciting. But... Um, lap 64. <laughs> well, I was going to say, um, I think obviously Max was a lot slower because he flats, like it wasn't just a lock cup, it was a huge lock cup that he yep. managed to do, um, right after his pit stop. Yeah. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I, I think, oh, there was a lot of pressure on him because Lando was right behind him, but I'm pretty sure there was a car between them, a back marker. <laughs> there were so many back markers, by the way, like uh, that fight. He, like, <laughs> was... he, he just did not need to uh, need to worry that much, but um, either way, uh, you know, of course, he's a, he's a professional race driver. I understand uh, the, the, the sort of maybe worry, I guess. Uh, when it comes to racing that hard. Uh, so, uh, yeah, of course, uh, he looks up, and then just lap after lap, he does a very interesting move, shall we say, <laughs> whilst uh, defending from Norris. There was a lot of... Uh, maybe uh, there's, there's a uh, quite a 
possibly uh, on the line, basically. Like, on, on the line, on, on the yeah. Limit. yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, that meant that, uh, well, that meant everyone was sort of. Uh, there's very, there's very good uh, analysis from uh, Anthony Davis, I think it is, um, at Sky Sports about it. Uh, yeah. That I'd suggest everyone go watch. Uh, that that's a, a very good way of uh, watching it uh, unfold. But uh, as you say, lap sixty four. Uh, it's when the true incident occurs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when, uh, who wants to take it? I have to actually explain what happened. I, you, you saw the race as it happened. I, I only caught okay. it. I, I literally, I think I was sitting down for uh, MCC and I, uh, yeah. I watched it um, because I was watching that live uh, and, I, and I saw it then. Uh, so... Yeah, I think I think it's probably best if you take it. All right, um, lap sixty four, Lando very close behind Max in the in the DRS range, but turn one didn't really go that well. But Lando still caught up in the DRS in the slipstream, going into turn three. Um, Max with his uh, well, as you said before, questionable moves under braking. Uh, Lando obviously wasn't that clean either. He had a track limit penalty pending. That was supposed to be there, but then going to do turn three, Lando sticks to the outside. Max um, tries, tries to squeeze him to the to the car, basically. Lando doesn't move pull to the left. They collide. It was such a such a weird collision that normally like wouldn't end up with anything, but both drivers got a puncture. Right it's after, <laughs> it's such a little touch that they yeah. have. It's sort of like huge crash or a huge collision. They they touch wheels and yeah, suddenly both their tires are popped. Yeah, it was it was so so sudden that I I couldn't believe what I what I was just seeing. Like like I, I saw both drivers were having punctures. George Russell like fifteen seconds behind him. I was like, oh my god, George Russell. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, after that. They were both like driving with broken cars. Obviously, Lando tries to overtake him because I think Lando's puncture was was worse, but it it like Lala. stayed Lala. on. It, 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 he could drive better than Max at the start. Uh, tries to overtake Max, but Max for, forces him into the grass, which I think was uh, well the main reason for the penalty, even though it wasn't said officially. Um, yes, yeah, I agree. Is the the contact itself? In my opinion, it was more of a well. Obviously, it was more of a, on the side uh, on the on Max's fault. Like uh, the en- entire incident could have been pre- prevented with Max not causing the collision. But after that, forcing a damaged car by your damaged car into onto the grass, uh, driving at those speeds is just that's it's uh, reckless. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, you know, the, 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 a lot can be said about his braking and. Uh... Uh, thing but that was yeah just just the the I don't I, I know people go oh it's a will to win thing but it, it was just reckless and uh, silly of him to yeah he, I mean he's pulling across and his tie is not it, he's he's already struggling so yeah. there was just no need for it I uh, imagine if Lana would actually get, go for it go for the grass like spin right into Max like do a George Russell from Imola 2020 <laughs> when yeah, he like exactly. sideways went to the Bottas that would be like a very very dangerous spread at those speeds um, right after they got punctures like that would have such a more of a, an, an impact in terms of well, uh, Twitter exploding <laughs> and so <laughs> on even though it ended up well, uh, it obviously didn't end up uh, good for both drivers. Uh, um, so, yeah, um, Lando ended up DNFing because he thought he had too much damage to continue. Max put on a new tire, instead of tires, and actually um, finished P5, so still a pretty decent he point. He did get a 10-second penalty, but he, uh, yeah. still managed to finish P5. <laughs> yeah, um, it it could have ended so much worse. Like thinking about it, uh, especially after the turn three incident, like the, the second one. Uh, but still, such a such a little little tap within the tires, both, both tires explode, and like the entire Twitter explodes. I, I I didn't quite get it. 
they obviously they're fighting for a win. It's a big thing that I glide and cause punctures, but still they are comparing it to, to the levels of 2021, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I think those those uh, people didn't even see 2021. <laughs> like that I season think, was. We've just well. been drained of like excitement for so long now. Yeah. That uh, any form of co- any form of fight up front that causes a collision is just a reminder of that time. Uh, because we've been just watching Max win by 20 seconds every race. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Here's something right. Uh, we've been just starved of excitement and like these kind of collisions where not like common, but not rare either. Like, fear is back, especially in the Mercedes days. Like, Fettel yeah. used to collide with Hamilton, uh, not not like every race, but it was, it was pretty, pretty often. Uh, yeah, 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 the Rosberg and Hamilton were uh, scrappy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now obviously 2021 happened, which was like the the pinnacle of or all the all the drama and the excitement and the collisions. Obviously, with a lot of them being over the line, and a lot of them ended up with uh, either one or both drivers DNFing. It was a wild mm-hmm. season, but this doesn't compare to it. I think. Uh, it, no, no it especially is, considering how controversial it got. Yeah. Uh, this is this is just a. Small hiccup. I guess the the main thing was like just the the fact that you know the uh, team principals are out for each other's necks and so on and uh, such. Um, and uh, scrapping each other um, about the incident, and then the drivers Lando is like, I lose respect for him if he doesn't. So there's a level of drama that's back at least. Uh, that we haven't we haven't seen in a while. Yeah, most of that drama was well. I don't want to say made up, but influenced by the media and uh, especially Twitter. <laughs> like the, yeah, I don't think true. it warranted that much attention, especially comparing it to twenty twenty one. It's like a, it's pretty much nothing. Like yeah, the drivers collide, uh, another driver wins because of it, but it's not like they're in title fight, they're like one point, or equal in points, or anything like that, it's just, there's like no fight for a title, there's drivers fighting hard, and then unfortunately crashing out, it's it's thing that happened pretty often back in the days, and people were just not used to it, and yeah, it happened again, and yeah, um... I think we will go. I don't think you're used on. to the Netflix generation yet. <laughs> yeah, obviously Netflix. Netflix will milk the heck out of it, but <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think it's that a big of a deal. And I'm glad yeah. you agree with me because yeah, we we've been through 2021. We we know <laughs> what hard racing is, especially from Max's side. And this is just the beginning. If it's if it's meant to be every single race, which I don't think it will be, but if it if it's meant to be like this. Then it's just the beginning. Like Max get even even harder in terms of racing. Like we know how Max is like when when everything is on the line. So yeah, um, it, that's still far away. Okay, like Grand Prix itself. Uh, we can go through the order. So get for like the, the the predictions in themselves for the Grand Prix. Obviously, um, the Grand Driver that we haven't really mentioned uh, this weekend, George Russell. I think he had a, a great weekend. Like, beat yeah. his teammate in qualifying, obviously, um, uh, beat him in the race as well. Inherited the two positions, obviously, was supposed to get a podium and got a win. Was in the right place at the right time. Beat yes. his teammate and got a, a pretty deserved win. Like, not not his, not, he was, wasn't supposed to win, but he was at the right place at the right time. And, yeah, draw a very good weekend. I think he kind of deserved the win, and I'm pretty happy for him as well. Because yeah, uh, people still feel like George isn't the the, the driver championship Kyle driver. I think I think a lot of people underrate him, and this uh, this this win came in the right time for him. I think as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah um, Look, he won F two. There's a reason he's you know yeah. 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 He literally won F two in front of drivers like Lando, and Alex, which are. Two very highly rated driver nowadays. Um, yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, I still feel like George Russell, George Russell is still very underrated uh, in terms of the multi general public. Um, so no points for the winner, which is, um, I mean, if we're losing our bets on Max for the Grand Prix win, I'm very, very happy. <laughs> you know okay, uh, P2, a very notable drive going from P7 to P2 on the grid. Um, Oscar Piastri with some amazing moves uh, during the Grand Prix. Showed some great pace as well. Very, very yeah. unfortunate with the stupid uh, try limits in qualifying. Could have actually won the race, finished like two seconds behind Russell in the end. Yeah, it was. He's really disappointed that he had a one as well. It's worth noting. Yeah, uh, so close by so far. Um, only P2 for PS3. Yeah, it, it, was a good, it, was, it was a huge chance for him to get his first victory. So yep. I, I can definitely yep. understand why he was so. But no, I don't see it has the the win in uh, in a sprint race, but uh, an actual Grand Prix victory would have been massive. Yeah, he, he was he, he he was phenomenal that weekend. So uh, obviously, again, right place at the right time. Um, didn't look like he was going to be fighting for a win, but uh, ended up getting close. Um, and yeah, good 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 race. I, I, uh, he is going to win. He's going to win a race and I think he'll be this season so looking forward to that <laughs> definitely definitely a, a race win caliber driver than PS3 is right now uh, he's yeah. doing that almost every single weekend um, yeah good drive from PS3 P2 in both spring race and the Grand Prix itself um, and overall a pretty good weekend uh, I think there's another driver who had a pretty good weekend Carl Sainz finished in P3 with a not very competitive Ferrari that it is in the past few races. Uh, was supposed to get P5, but still uh, those positions were inherited thanks to him driving well. Drive better than Leclerc the entire weekend. And yep, a pretty, pretty well deserved podium from this Carlos. This Ferrari is very confusing, let me say. Yeah, yeah that's that's only true, but I, I want to point out uh, a good weekend from Carl Sainz, who yes, got definitely. another podium. Uh, in his I, I just, I'm, I'm very confused how it could be. Yeah, it wasn't that quick in Spain, I guess. Um, but you know, it, 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 it struggled in Canada. It looked like it was struggling here a bit more. Um, but yeah, a good, a good performance from Sainz, who uh, I hope gets announced for the ride soon. Yeah, it was supposed to be like two weekends ago, and still uh, no news. Yeah. That's yeah, it's, no news. It's, it's weird. Uh, I hopefully want to see Carlos next year uh, in Formula 1 because definitely ha has, the, well, has the talent to remain on the grid uh, for a foreseeable future. It looks like he's going to move to uh, like bottom end uh, team at the moment. Um, obviously, with, the, with his options being like, like Williams, Alpine, and uh, Sauber at the moment, I don't think Haas is an option for him personally. Yeah, we'll discuss that in the next episode. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay, P four, um, a pretty quiet race with damage. Uh, that was well his own fault, I think. Well, well um, yeah, better race prep at turn one it could have prevented him and maybe could have given him a better result because we obviously saw him, um, well battling Russell for was P two at, at at that moment. Uh, I think at the start of the Grand Prix. So, if it wasn't for the damage maybe he could have actually won the race. Like, <laughs> there's legit possibility that maybe, he could have maybe, won yeah. this Grand Prix if, if just could have maybe stayed out of the, out of the trouble. You can tell he's getting frustrated with himself uh, as well. He is no longer with the car. It is uh, like you saw in Canada. He, he talked about how it was the worst weekend that he's raced and then uh, this weekend as well. Uh, yeah, uh, it's it's messy. It's messy. Yeah, uh, but we get a point <laughs> thanks to it. So, yeah. uh, good job, us. Okay, <laughs> okay. P five was uh, Max Max or seven. It's very weird to say Max P five, but that's that's the case. Um, thanks to the the collision, and yeah, we, we already talked about Max and Norris. So yeah, fastest lab went. Actually, Max was very close to getting into fastest lap as well, but 
the most random fastest lap by Fernando Alonso in his history of in Formula One, I think. <laughs> like P eighteen or P seventeen, like nowhere near the points, just pits in for the fresh soft tires and yeah. puts in the fastest lap. Like, that was such a random Fernando thing to happen. Uh, yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. definitely. But uh, it, he stole a point from me, so I'm, uh, thank, thanks to him, I'm not that behind. Leeds <laughs> uh, <laughs> impressive team. Um, this is interesting. Mercedes definitely not. Like they literally won the Grand Prix. Uh, Aston is one of the contenders, I would say. Like uh, they haven't been great the past few weekends, obviously. So yeah, this weekend wasn't great either, but. It's how you look at it. Like, if you expect Aston to still be at least competing for points, then then you get a point. But if you if you look at Aston's uh, form for the past five weekends, like ever, well, Canada was still all right, but after that, Spain awful. Then, well, this this weekend was just horrible. Yeah, it's, uh, Aston is a very, a very weird car. They they're either getting knocked down in Q one or getting like high end points in P6 or whatever. I guess we could give you the point here if you want it. Uh, there's also uh, uh, other teams that you could give it to, in my opinion. So I mm, what 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 are the other teams you could say? Uh Ferrari? <laughs> well uh, obviously Carlos got the podium but it's mostly on Carlos in my opinion. Like uh yeah Ferrari Obviously, uh, starting with point qualifying with Leclerc getting out late, uh, his engine literally stopped because of a team order. <laughs> he didn't get a lap in, and in general, the the team wasn't anywhere near they were supposed to be in this weekend. Uh, like a lot of people actually thought that Ferrari could bounce back this weekend, and uh, it was just wasn't the case. It was the exact opposite. Leclerc had one of his most well. Most Leclerc Ferrari weekends, like, uh, yeah, well, um, quite a resemblance of the last two years. We kind of, kind of, uh, not used to, I guess, um, I don't know. Um, I, I had high expectations of Ferrari. That's why I would pick their, them over Aston. But I would understand if you would give Aston the point. Uh, I'm just, I'm putting it out there. Ferrari still scored the third amount, most amount of points. Okay. Fourth, so I wait fourth. Oops, my bad. Um, <laughs> fourth by one though, compared to compared to the Red Bull, that would be my one thing. Whereas the Aston scored no points. You know, Alonso was a lap down, um, which it's Alonso. Obviously, Pitt and so on, but you know, it's a, they were both for a lap. They were both got lapped. And considering you know the start of the season and so on, I just was I wouldn't be expecting that. Okay. Um, that would be my reason behind the Aston. Yeah, completely fair. I think both both options are pretty pretty equal in terms of well, at least impressiveness. Um, I'm open to giving a point. Actually, like Aston, one of their worst weekends this season, definitely. Yeah. So, so. I think it would be fair if 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 they were both lapped by by not you know. It's not even that they were lapped. They were lapped by George Russell, who was behind the leaders. So <laughs> yeah. they weren't even lapped by the original lead, you know, leaders. They were lapped by George Russell, uh, who who should have come third. Uh, and in a car that was definitely, you know, it, it, it had promise. Uh, and they just can't seem to... I mean, Alonso's recent races, obviously they did okay in Spain, the Astons. But uh, since like Italy, where have they been? Since the Emilia Grand Prix, I just have not had any trust in in Aston. Uh, even, sorry, even Miami, they were yeah, poor. Ever, ever since like um, Miami, I think Miami was the turning point. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. been very poor, and a lot there. Uh, you know, Alonso has even been poor. Um, so I'm really questioning what is happening at that team. Yeah. Uh, of course, they announced Stroll was playing uh, uh, on, so yeah. that, that, that's an interesting thing <laughs> to do there. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a conversation of its own. Obviously, uh, <laughs> last Stroll. Yeah. Um, there's also an interesting rumor going around that 
uh, that Adrian Newey has already signed for Aston and just negotiating uh, the salary. I have no Ooh. idea how trustworthy that is, uh, considering like Piastri, uh, sorry, uh, Newey was supposed to like sign for three teams already. Like, uh, I think there's this account on Twitter that's reporting uh, that Newey signed for Ferrari like every single week. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 weird. I don't know what to believe, but if they actually yeah. sign Newey, then maybe he can help, like with that technical directive, uh, helping them develop the car. Uh, definitely a huge help would that be, but who knows? Yeah, who knows? definitely. They, 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 it would be a huge plus for them, yeah. uh, considering where they are currently. Least impressive uh, driver. Go ahead. <laughs> Least impressive driver. Uh, signs, no, no. He was, he was the best Ferrari driver, or the best Ferrari team member, <laughs> let's say. At, at this I moment. think you could go up there for a most impressive driver, but we didn't. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Magnussen, as well, like uh, a contender for the for the most impressive driver, uh, go go into top ten in both sessions, uh, both well both races. Yeah, uh, definitely not a point for least impressive. Um, who would you give it the least impressive driver to? Uh, least impressive. Yep. Uh, you know what? Even I guess Charles is in the in the shout, even those unfortunate stuff. Uh, can we give it Max or Norris? Mm, nah, I, 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 I don't think uh, that, that was part of a leading person. I think, I think, okay, yeah. I oh. just think, in terms of Max, you expect him to finish first, he doesn't, you know. <laughs> That's true, uh, but, but the entire weekend yeah. maybe it would be a, a poor decision to give it him. Uh, um, I, I'd say I'm so. Oh, so yeah, that's uh, it's a fair pick. Uh, it's also yeah. obviously Perez is also uh, always a good pick. Uh, yes, like finish behind point, the ass. <laughs> at this uh, point, that was a good weekend for him. Oh yeah, <laughs> P seven. That's, that's just crazy good. because he he was P seven with his teammate, getting in a crash, getting a puncture, getting a ten second penalty. He still was couldn't get that place. Lost to Nico Hulkenberg. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's just the the Perez weekend that we used to yes. see. Yeah. Um, but the driver that I would give the least impressive driver to um, is actually Yuki Tsunoda, and that's okay. mostly due yeah, to yeah, him being beaten by Daniel throughout pretty much the entire weekend. Apart from like qualifying, actually, they they were pretty close. I think Tsunoda beat him by like half a tenth. Other than that, Ricardo was just better like every single session. Yeah. And got the points for the team. Uh, well, it's not that was like nowhere in the race. Um, so, That's a fair shout. Yep. Yeah. You expect uh, Yuki to well destroy Ricardo. Let's say like this season has not been great for Ricardo, and you expect Yuki to be much better. Like really, yeah. Already especially uh, considering our quarter yeah. uh, review, we we were expecting a lot more. Okay. Right. Um. Anyway, either way, uh, with those three picks that we had, uh, not a lot of good points, so uh, it doesn't really matter. Most impressive team. This, this, this is pretty much... Uh, I can't believe I picked Williams. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly do not know what happened there. Uh, yeah, Alpine was an interesting pick, but it was not anywhere near the, uh, the most impressive no. team. I think there are, there are two... Decent picks, but one that it's like standing out. Uh, the the first being obviously Mercedes uh, yeah. got a win finally, but still wasn't on pure pace. So I couldn't really say that. Uh, but the team that the team that scored the most points out of the any midfield team this season, uh, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, because. Because obviously, I don't think Toro Rosso had a better result than uh, P6 and P8. No, has. Has. Absolutely has to go to them, yeah. Absolutely. Well, we how, uh, how did that happen? Like, what? How did they finish, I mean, how did they finish next to a Red Bull? <laughs> what just happened? Literally, it is. The, the finishing positions are Red Bull hats, Red Bull hats. Yeah, uh, that's, that's pretty crazy. That's, um, that's insane. You know, 
they seem to have just figured out the issues that arose last season to do with I mean last season it tended to be that they were actually quite quick on pace but their tire tire management was just awful uh they seem to have figured that out um and yeah they managed to do really well with Grand Prix, uh which is very I'm glad, very glad to see because of course uh this was the race that Hockenberg managed to get uh, such a good sprint quality last year. Um, and uh, why well, he managed to get points this year. So uh, not only were they, yeah, it was not only the race, you know, they were they were good throughout the weekend. Definitely, definitely big shout out to Haas. Maybe for even um, performance of the season thus far. Yeah, yeah, could could be wild and definitely um, from a team, of course. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, like, this is the thing. I didn't expect them to be like absolutely trashed, the slowest team, but they didn't show that much pace for the weekend. They were mostly like fighting with with the Alpine and uh, Tatar also for yeah. for the final final point spots, but they just turned up in the race with. The most rare thing that you ever see in a Formula One Grand Prix, a good Haas strategy. <laughs> and they legit beat a Red Bull on pace. Obviously it was a damaged Perez, but but still like it's such a good achievement. Like P6 for Hulkenberg, his best results since like 2019 Monza. That's that's crazy. Like and Magnuson and, and P8, like having both cars in such a good points being positions. Such a good job from the team. I, I'm I'm very very happy for them. Especially it's, it's my favorite driver getting P6 in the house. But yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely very impressive, and uh, I'm very happy. I, think that, yeah. I was just saying, I think that leads on perfectly to most impressive driver as well. Yeah, uh, I think they're a very good, a very good chance. Like, yeah, a lot of, a lot of good chance. Ah. Um, uh, you can, yeah, yeah. Astro deserves a shout. I, I should. George. I should be biased, but I also, on the other hand, I, I, I don't really want to be as biased. Obviously, yeah, P6 is amazing. Um, I should, but uh, I'm, I'm going to leave it this one to you because uh, I have like so oh, many picks. I have like with Sainz, Piastri, yeah. even Magnuson, Russell. Uh, there are so many picks that you could pick. Um, I'm just gonna leave it to you. Whoever get the point. I think I, I, I think all those top three were were are phenomenal shouts, but I'm also I think it is deserving of um, Hulkenberg's head. Uh, <laughs> I think he was the most impressive driver for me. Uh, just because I, you know, I they were they were phenomenally like even if you think uh, they they didn't do it incredibly well. It's still just a mid team. Um, you know, they weren't phenomenally off the pace. It, it ended up being about, what, 50 seconds behind, which I know isn't great, but uh, it's, it's, it's has. And uh, yeah, I, I just think Hulkberg uh, is pretty deserving of this weekend. Uh, second place probably goes to Piastri. Uh, but yeah, there you go. All right, all right. Uh... Either way, we don't get a point, so um, not being far off. I just want to like both has drivers, in my opinion, could get the most impressive because yeah, Hulkenberg P six and Haas is is great, but Magnussen you don't usually expect Magnussen to keep up with Hulkenberg uh, on pace, and no, well, yeah. he he got top ten in both the race sessions in during the weekend in a Haas. In the, for Magnuson, like we don't usually expect Magnuson. I, that's that's why I think the most impressive toward uh, like compared to our expectations. I think Magnuson is definitely equal in Hulkamer in this case, despite Hulkamer getting the better result in the Grand Prix. So yeah, that's uh, that's my final thoughts for the most impressive driver. That's fair, that's fair. Ah, uh, this this one is uh, what wait, wait Mag. Oh, Mac race ban. Okay, that didn't happen. Yeah, I thought, I thought he'd get a race ban for Silverstone. Uh, it did not happen. Um, and no. we we didn't get any single any rain, so my prediction is completely yeah, off. Shock. <laughs> a huge shock. Yeah, uh, it's it's also forecast uh, for some rain during the Silverstone Grand Prix. Uh, 
All right. I think it's the morning, sadly. I don't yeah. think we'll actually get some in the Grand Prix. Well, as you never know, with the British weather, hopefully... Uh... Yeah, true that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, going to get some excitement. Uh, it's also always fun to have uh, rain at Silverstone. Well, well uh, most recently we had the, the wet qualifying, and we had Latifi going fastest, and then just Perez going fastest, and just Perez dropping out of Q one. <laughs> oh, that was crazy times. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, now um, we're done for this uh, for this Grand Prix. <laughs> it was a yeah. very long one and uh, very deserving of a long one. Yes, string run pretty. Yeah, um, more of these, please. Uh, more, more of these, especially the second half of the race. Uh, that was that was very very good. And yeah, I'm I'm happy with this Grand Prix. It definitely uh, was needed. Yeah, I agree. It was it was a great Grand Prix. I'm hoping it it translates to Silverstone well. I'm hoping we get a lot more, maybe a little bit more drama. Uh, maybe more uh, less Lando respecting. I think that's a, a lot of people have had an issue with Lando respecting Max Verstappen. Uh, and whilst I don't think uh, that is necessarily true, uh, I am excited for maybe a few more dive bombs from him from now on. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I, ex- I explained it like uh, I've, I wanted to. I wanted more excitement on quite. Uh, Drivers crashing into each other, even though it's exciting, it's still like not. not I know I that... want this British Grand yeah. Prix, but you'll have to watch the next episode for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's hop into the British Grand Prix predictions very soon, and we're going to end this video. I think. Um, thanks everyone who's been watching our content. It's uh, it's great to have you, and we're really really uh, happy to do these. For my audience, yeah. even though it's uh it's way smaller than it used to be, um, I appreciate every single one of you, and we're gonna keep doing this just it's because it's fun. We don't like really care about the views anymore. Like uh, at least I don't think so. Like it's it's a lot of fun doing these, and hopefully we can we can continue doing them. So thanks everyone who's been watching this, and like if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and and so on, just the usual things. Thank you again, and see you yeah. next time. Peace. Oh, you remember it. <laughs>